Not too long ago, the printer was sitting on my desk waiting to be fixed. Now it's the fastest printer I own and the quality that it's capable of is simply amazing, even at higher than recommended speeds. In this episode, I'll be upgrading the machine even more, converting all 12 volt components to 24 volt ones, as well as fixing up a few little annoying things around the machine itself. Let's go over the upgrades. I've got a bunch of 24 volt components, which includes a new power supply, heater bed and hot end, as well as a CHT volcano nozzle, which is one piece instead of the two I had before, which should improve print quality and speed. I'll be swapping the fans, installing heat sinks, and getting a power socket added because having the cord permanently attached to the machine is and was getting quite annoying. Now, these are all things that I plan on doing, however, one major change has already been made, thanks to some outside help, thanks Colton. And that's the addition of UART mode for my stepper drivers, enabling me to control their current via clipper from mainsail. This has already enabled me to print so much faster, so by the end of the video, we'll be reaching some insane speeds. Let's get started by uninstalling the old 12 volt components. Since I don't really have a use for the heated bed right now, I'm just going to put it in storage with the other components and it'll be fine. For now, I'll just put the whole thing there and uh, we can install a new one, which is going to be exciting. And hopefully the uh, mounting holes match up. I'm a little bit worried about that, but it should be fine. Now, I know this is completely irrelevant, but I lost this heat gun for like two years or something and I've been needing it for this machine. And so I was like, okay, I need to go find it. And I find it within 10 seconds, but I haven't seen it in years. Luckily I had a spare, um, a ton of spare parts left over. So we've got the new heated bed. We'll keep the springs. Well, actually we're gonna be replacing those. Insulation, a new magnetic sheet, and we'll be reusing the PEI. Oh, wait, has that always been like that? This video is kindly supported by PCBWay. If you're looking to bring your next project to reality or to the next level, consider using PCBWay. They offer metal 3D printing using SLM technology, resin printing using SLA, and FDM 3D printing. So there's pretty much nothing they can't do. They offer CNC machining out of a ton of different materials, and they offer PCB fabrication up to the most advanced levels, including flexible PCBs. So if you want to push your project to the next level, consider checking them out, first link in the description. Thank you to PCB Way for sponsoring this video.
everything's now wired up and hopefully it won't blow up when we turn it on but I have high hopes okay I'm gonna turn on the power and we'll see if it turns on properly okay field touch turned on oh that's awesome it didn't it didn't blow up I swapped the two fan cables around now the hot end fan is spinning but the part cooling one isn't which is good That's heating up so much faster than 12 volts. That's actually amazing. Might have to do a new PID tune as well. I hope the filament goes through. It's skipping for some reason. Yes, let's go. Oh, that was frustrating. So you see those two mounting holes there. What I'm thinking of is having some brackets go up and then across and then joining to it and doing that on both sides. That way I can have this off the ground like that. It wouldn't work the other way though. And I'll figure something out for the main board. That looks pretty good. And yes, it is suspended above the ground so that it can get air intake, but I might make it a little bit higher up so that I can uh, get more. So V1 was a proof of concept that I could indeed mount the power supply to the frame, but I really don't think it's good enough and uh, it's not strong enough. So I'm gonna be printing V2 now, swapping it out, and I think it's gonna be great. As you can see with these new ones installed, we have a little bit more clearance, but the main thing is the power supply is a lot more stable. It's really held in there. These things are a lot stronger. So that's good. Now we can move on to the main board, which is gonna be challenging, I think. Let's test to make sure that the uh, wiring is done up correct. It's not powered currently, but I'm gonna plug the socket in. Now I'm going to turn mains power on. Mains power is on. Now I'm gonna flip the switch. Look at that, that's awesome. And now we can add the zip ties to it, 
which will be cool. I'll be using these 4.8mm cable ties when designing the spacing for the cable ties I used, uh, I think 5mm value. If you guys have any tips on how to improve this, because cable strain is pretty important, cable relief I guess, um, yeah, let me know, I'm happy to hear them. One of my favorite parts about projects like these is that when I'm done, I can pack everything away and make my workshop look as clean as it used to. It's definitely not perfect, but it's a lot better than before. Plus I intend to make some changes over the coming months to optimize my workflow. Now that the machine is working fine, let's print some benches as fast as we can and push the machine to its limits. under 10 minutes. That's uh, 100% under 10 minutes. Next time, let's aim for under 9, let's say. Thank you guys so much for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you again soon.